You know, I was I was looking in um, prophetic mysteries uncovered completely. I was looking inside the book, and I realized that I ain't never heard this stuff before. <laughs> I realized that I ain't never heard this before. So, I said to myself, do my people really know, or is the people reading this book, do they really know what they got? Saints, you know how ludicrous it is to get robbed and have a gun? And you get robbed and your gun is in your house and you don't pull it out and you get robbed. This the word for those of you all that got my book. If you got a book in my hand, in your hand, and you fail God, he going to judge you off of these books. I promise you. Because these books got everything in there that you're going to face in this life. I done dealt with every demon, every spirit, every attack, every thought, every emotion, every every type of person, every type of uh, addiction. I done dealt with it. In both of these books, increasing your anointing as a virtuous woman. Both of them are over what, what 200 pages. Wow. Look, prophetic mysteries is over 200 pages. And look, I don't write my font like these these broke preachers. Small little font. My font is big enough for you to see. You don't got to get them double double D Malcolm in the middle lens to see it. You ain't got to get no double D Malcolm in the middle lens to see it. It's clear, clean and clear. My font. Since one time I went to go read a man book, the, the print was so small, I said, oh, never mind. He must not be getting none. Never mind. <sighs> now, I was looking at the book. There's so much powerful things inside the book. And I was wondering, do they know that all of these are mantles for their mind? These are mantles for them to come into another degree of Holy Spirit led life. Look what I have in page 100 of my book. Um, Prophetic Mysteries Uncovered Completely. Look what I have right here. I have. Anyone who does not liberate you is strengthening your bondage. Anyone who does not liberate you is strengthening your bondage. So watch, you might have a conversation with a, a, a you might call them a BFF. If they're not liberating you, they strengthening your bondage somehow, even if it's in being complacent. Because if they're not seeking God, Even a conversation with them is releasing the realm of not seeking God on you. Think about it. If they are not led by the spirit, just even a conversation with them is releasing the realm of not being led by the spirit on you. So. Watch this, watch this. Look what I said in, in page 100 of Prophetic Mysteries Uncovered Completely. What you are around will abound in you. What you are around will abound in you. You must guard your heart and be dedicated to avoiding trash. Don't 
let, do not let anyone plant garbage on your grace, but use your grace to avoid garbage. Oh my God. Do not let anyone plant garbage on your grace. But use your grace to avoid garbage. Don't let your soul become a trash can. Let your soul become a Chanel purse. Man, I'm going to go get my... I ain't playing with you. Hold on. Give me two seconds. I ain't playing no games. Hold on. I got to get something. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Dun, 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 dun. As a matter of fact, let me see, son. I got to get something. Oh, never mind. Dad, you got it. It was Kung Fu fighting. Remember the same Kung Fu? There was Kung Fu fighting. I say, look, some stuff you have for inspiration. I, I want to, want to show you this. It is. This is a Gucci bag here. Let me show you something. This is your soul. This is your soul. Ain't this a nice bag? How could you not be happy if you got this bag? Saying sometimes just raw walk around and tote this bag. You say what you want. Don't say this is for a female. Hey, man. Yeah, a female can suck a toe, hey? <laughs> I'm joking around. A woman is the most precious thing next to the Holy Spirit. A woman is the most precious thing next to the angels of God. But just make sure you ain't got no mustache. We're going to take you to the baby zoo. Get that fixed. One time a woman got real sick. She was... <coughs> Her husband came in and said, babe, I, I scheduled a, a, a visit to the doctor. She said, oh, babe, you're so thoughtful of me. You love me that much? She said, yeah, I love you, girl. I love you. 
All right, just go ahead back to sleep. Tomorrow we going in the morning, all right? All right, baby? All right. She went to sleep smiling. Oh, he loves me. He loves me now. Oh, he loves me. She woke up in the morning. I said, oh, baby, come here. I got something for you. He said, you got something for me? Well, go and get it done before you find out where I'm taking you. Come on over here. Don't figure out nothing. Come on over here. Don't ask me no questions either. All right? Because it's going to mess up your flow. All right. All right. Praise God. So after, after everything was said and done, he's taking her to the doctor. While they're on the way to the doctor, she said, baby, uh, what's the name of the doctor? He said, no, 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 <laughs> no, that's not for your knowledge. All right. Just let me do all the work. You sick. Don't worry about it. I'm taking care of you. Don't worry about nothing. That's not for your mind to ponder or wonder about. All right. All right. Um, um, you, know, you might have to ponder. Uh, might look like Wander Sykes. You'll be all right. All right. Okay. And and they was on their way. And when he pulled up, he said, baby, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And he, she said, why well, I got to close my eyes? Said, Listen, just follow me. I know what I'm doing. I come to help you. By the time she got to the door, she said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said, baby, what, what you doing? He said, shh, 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 shh. You, you making the dog bark because you got on that old scent that used to be worn by your mama 1967, all right? When the Holocaust, the Holocaust was over. The Holocaust, Holocaust, a Holocaust, a Holocaust, a Holocaust. And that's what happened. You was... And so, all right, come on now, just stop it now. Proceed inside. Meow, meow. <laughs> she said, hey, baby, what, can I open my eyes? I said, no, stop. Now, wait. They got up to the front desk. The lady said, welcome to the vet. Uh, organization, we've come to uh, look out for your pets. Uh, what, what pet have you come to bring today? Um, what pet have you come to bring today to be seen? So, ladies, here's the revelation. Don't let no man put no blindfold on you when you're sick. <laughs> yeah, he might take you to the wrong doctor, the vet. <laughs> Get you a shot in the hip. Whoops. Get you, Get you tranquilized. Don't get tranquilized. Now, saints, look at this here. I'm dealing with this here. All right, this is what I want you to see. This is your soul. This is your soul. It's in good condition. It's of nice quality. But here's what's happening. If you're not careful... This is what Satan going to do. Get your hands off of me. Get your, come on, get your hands off of me. Right? Get, get off. Get off of me. Get, I took, um, get off of me. Boy, girl, boy, I, I come from the projects. I don't get... And see, what he did now, he got the trash inside of you. All right? Now, watch this here. Watch this here. This is the image 
of God. It's beautiful. It's nice. It's rich. It's perfect. It's luxurious. But watch this. Here comes the devaluing. Watch this. If I find out that there's trash in here, this is no longer valuable. If I find out inside here is trash, if I find out inside of here is garbage, outside of here is not gonna mean nothing. Now, what if inside of here is diapers and all type of stuff? Use diapers. All type of stuff. Guess what? This outside, even though, look, it's nice. Look, it got this trash in there. So watch this. Where could I take this bag? Because guess what? Everywhere I take it, people going to smell the trash. People might look from a distance and say, oh, that's a nice bag. But then when they get close, they're going to smell. Here's the revelation. How is God going to take you in high places? How is he going to use you in, in, in different scenarios? And you smell like your thoughts. You smell like your memory. You smell like your anger. How is he going to take you? Because eventually people are going to smell you. They're going to see that there's unclean spirits operating in your attitude. So all of this will drift away. So here's what God do. Even though you think that you are right and you Gucci. This is what he do. He take you through a season. Your wig don't fell off. You up there crying, oh, oh Lord, get me out of this situation. Oh Lord, they find me, Jesus. Oh Lord, they don't like me. Oh Lord, get me out of this workplace. Lord, what my time? I, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, my, ch my child done turned against me. Jesus, I done raised him up. Jesus, oh, they coming, they coming in here with the blicky. They coming in here with the blicky. Now here's the thing, watch this here. Now, now, He's got Mexicans. Look, say, look at the Mexicans. I'm about to tell them right now. I'm about to go off and tell them to cut the daggone land more off. I'm about to tell them, cut this daggone land more long. And yeah, 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 yeah. Some full blown niggas. Always working hard. <laughs> Why black people don't think like the Mexicans? The Mexicans be getting it done. They come out, they don't care. Oh, they don't care if they came to your house yesterday. They had to. You try to stop him, he on the lawnmower. <laughs> you gotta chase them. You gotta chase them, and then you gotta have a dictionary because they don't understand English. You gotta, you gotta translate. You gotta have a Spanish dictionary with you, a Mexican dictionary with you. As you go to restaurants in America, they don't speak, they don't speak English no more. They look at you like you're a foreigner. Uh, is you this your restroom? Eh.
Oops. God. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Uh -uh. Oh. Nothing. Shh. 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 So watch this. If this bag ain't right, if if it still got trash in there, God got take it. God take it through all type of stuff. Watch this. Watch this. The stuff is to get this and rip it out of you. And sometimes it been in you so long that you even start fighting God. So he like, give it to me. Give me this anger. Give me this bitterness. Give me this stubbornness. You don't want to do what I tell you to do. Give me this fear of man. You, every time I pitch you around somebody, they bark at you. You start up there praying for deliverance like a little punk. Every time somebody fights you and talk about you, you sad. Don't want, don't want up there eat your daggone hogging dots ice cream. No daggone more. Up there scared. Up there trembling tall. So, Lord, I can't wait to be with you in heaven because this world ain't got nothing for me. Get the dog on a scary cat. Oh, so you serve me. You up there scared of every snake, every serpent, every wicked spirit. You up there talking about you anointed and you don't even know how to advance against the satanic kingdom. Every time they come against you, you up there talking some Lord, come help me. I need thee every hour. And sometimes he got to rip the stuff out of you because you don't want to let it go. He got to fight to get it out of you. Because you holding on to it, your anxiety, your worry, your fear, your stress. He's saying, give it to me. And here's the crazy thing. What happens? After all that time, holding on to stuff negative, even when God comes to get it from you, you defending it. Saints, do you know that bitterness is your defense of pain? Bitterness is your defense of pain. Pride is your defense of error. So watch. The situation is supposed to get this out of you. And once he get it out of you. Now. You back to the beauty. Your soul can be a trash can. Or a purse. Your, your soul can be a trash can or a purse. Watch this. You whip the purse out. It could be either. It could be a trash can or a purse. Either you can have good and precious things that supply what you need to you. Or you can be loaded down with demonic trash and garbage. You understand? Now the purse is restored back to his beauty. The bag, the bag restored back to his beauty. As long as it had trash in it, it is devalued. People can look at it and say, it's nasty. This ain't got nothing in it. But now, after it went through a process, now it's back to Gucci. Now it's back to Gucci. Don't let your soul become a garbage bag, a trash can, and God wanted it to be a purse. He wanted it to be something that he can place materials that's going to be beneficial to you. Because once... That takes place. Now God can pitch you on the shelf. And he don't mind you being seen because there's no there's nothing in you that's going to smell funny. That's going to misrepresent God when they when they're going to experience love. Don't say that, that, that you know, Christian, you don't even know how to love people. How could you love a God that you have not seen and you see people every day and you don't know how to love them? 
Say, how many stupid people have you met like that in your life? I remember being young and I knew people were stupid. I was a little teenager and knew people was dumb. How you going to go to a church up there and raise your hand, I love you, Lord, and then in the back of your mind, oh, look at her over there. You can't do both. You either for Satan or for Jesus. You can't be in between. If you in between, you are exactly for the devil. If you're going to walk in love, walk in love fully. God walked in love with your bald head self when you missed the mark. So walk in love towards others, nigga. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. I'm talking to somebody's spirit up in here. You need to hear it apostatically like that. This this a hitter season. You need to come up. You need to get your money. You can't be on this little elementary stuff no more. We, we need to come up. Up there. We like we like God to treat us a certain type of way, then we want to dish people and do them wrong. Come on. If, if you want God to respond to you a certain way, then don't be shocked when he pitted in your ball to respond to people a certain way. And then you're up there talking, no, I'm not gonna do that. Well, nigga, you going to hell. You don't want to do it for people. God ain't going to do it for you. Proverbs chapter 8. And daughter, I hear you. This not just for JHM. This is a worldwide message. This for everybody. This not, this not a, a ministerial message. This is a national, a eternal, a worldwide message. This go for every race, continent group is not just a close thing is a is a distant thing there are women that hate their children because their child left them at 18 there are children that hate their parents because their parents won't go work they think that their parents left them to be in a a, a, a daycare so this not just something for personal this is for people all across the world that's struggling with how could i respond to somebody that i'm offended i feel like the person did not supply what i want them to supply at the moment i want them to supply so this is for all groups this is for the man that thinks that his father was never there so he think that he got to be received by the gang members or he becoming a gang member because this is how he feels everything is going to make him uh, 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 get rid of the pain. He think that that's if he got gang members that say if you go rob the bank or oh, you did a good job, you just killed that one. You did a good job. This is for everybody. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Because saints, the thing about it is. You can't try to bypass people and get to God because how God is going to test you whether or not you're worthy to even be in his inner court is how you handle people. Whenever you see a man or a woman that's very close to Jesus, that's somebody that has perfected their love towards others on the earth, not God in heaven, others on the earth, because you can't be on an island by yourself and say that you love God and then God can't even get you to do something for people that you say you don't like. No, no, no. If you love God, the only way that you can love him is if you become love to somebody on the earth. I, I, we just got to get that right, saints, you understand? Because because don't go to hell being stupid and deceiving yourself and talking about you love God and you close to God and all this stuff. How the hell are you close to God and you don't even know how to treat somebody that's in your proximity? And then you want to go over to Africa talking about you doing a mission work to save souls. Ain't nobody want your ugly self over in Africa and you can't even help somebody in America. How the hell you bypass what's in front of you and go find something that's not in front of you? There's somebody in your presence. This apostolic. There's somebody in your presence that you can show what you're up there talking so you going abroad to show. You around co-workers, oh, they talking about me like a dog. Well, blessed it be God. That's a good time for you to roof, roof, roof with the love. They talking about you like a dog. That's a good time for you to, who let the dogs out with your love.
You got to get this right. Don't be saying like that you know close to God and you don't know how to treat people. Saints, I've been in the presence of people before. They think that they're so high and mighty. In ministry, they get up on the stage and can't do squat. They can't do no demonstration. They can't do no miracles. They can't do nothing, but they hide. They hide left up in their mind. Somebody like me that can do all things, I just look at them. What a dumbass. What a fool right there. I just let them talk. I just let them make them feel, feel extra great. But in the back of my mind, I said, Jesus, please don't let me be no dumbass, please. Jesus, let me die before I become a dumbass. If I, if you ever sense that I'm gonna become a dumbass, just, just, just kill me. All right, just kill me. I don't, I don't want, I don't want. Just let me. Cause saints, your whole relationship with God is about how you treat somebody in your presence. You know that, right? Why was Saul tormented? Because he wasn't treating David right. God wasn't dealing with Saul because of how he treated 50 people in the kingdom. He was dealing with David. David was in his presence. That's the, that's how you increase your proximity, your closeness with Jesus, your oneness with Jesus. How do you treat people that he pits in your life? Because Jesus never going to let you be solo in the sense of you on an island by yourself. That's why he told Jonah, go to Nineveh. See, Jonah want to say, no, nah, no, nah, Lord, I want to stay to myself. Them people wicked. But Jesus ain't dealing with that. If you love me, Jonah, go to where people are that I'm sending you to and treat them the way that I'm telling you to treat them. This is how you're going to display your love for me. Part two. Some of you all don't know what love means. You think love means exalting Satan and celebrating the devil. That ain't what love means, doggone it. You got to know where to invest honor. Love don't mean start celebrating folk that's wicked. Love mean that you're going to obey God if he asks you to do something. Love don't mean that you start holding up Haman that's trying to kill all the Jews and say, oh, here's Haman. He's wonderful. No, no, no. Use a Esther. You take Haman head off. You hang him. You get rid of that demon. But you are still functioning in an openness where if God tells you to do something, you're good. You're not holding on to bitterness and wrath. But you don't be stupid. You don't be stupid. Because if you don't understand what love means, you become a victim of manipulation and deception. You have to know what love means. For every single person, there's a different love that God is going to call you to demonstrate. For some people, the love is to exalt them because they're worthy of exaltation. For some people, the love is to be merciful to them because God is given an opportunity for change. For some people, the love is be patient with them because one day G is going to kill them. <laughs> I need five people to share this broadcast. Psalm 37 said the Lord laughed because he know that that day is coming. There's a, there's a love that you showed. I'm patient because that ain't my duty. I ain't going to slaughter you. That's God's duty. You understand? There's a different love for every scenario. Now, if somebody that there's a judgment awaiting them and you start exalting them because you don't understand what love means, you just violated the, the code. Because that's not the avenue in which God was telling you to demonstrate love. The avenue was patience. The avenue was not celebration. 
Because the Bible said no flesh can stand in God's presence. So. You have to know what's the stream of love that God has given to you for each person, because if you are a manager, you're not going to show love in giving everybody a raise. Because There might be somebody that come into work late every every day. They disrespect everything that you instruct them to do. If you tell them to make sure that their work desk is clean, they make sure that it's the messiest. If you tell them to make sure that they uh, join up with other team members in the workplace, and then they still say, oh, I ain't working with nobody, I'm going to stay solo, and they go against, they're not worthy of the avenue of love for a pay raise. But you may show them the avenue of love of patience because you don't fire them. You understand? I'm giving you wisdom here, saints. I'm giving you wisdom. If you understand what I'm saying, let this be a part of your life. Because you can't give people the wrong harvest that they're not worthy of. This is why so many people have grieved God or did stuff that God didn't want. Because you can't give people a harvest that they're not worthy of. The Bible said, study those that labor among you because they worthy of double honor. You can't give double of honor to people that ain't labor among you. You crazy? You have to know the perspective in which God wants you to respond to each person in the earth. Not everybody is worthy of the same response. So if a boss has somebody that comes in late every day, every instruction he gives them, they're either late or they never get it done. And there's a there's another employee that comes in 10 minutes before time, gets everything done to the degree the boss can call on them to get other people's assignment done because the boss knows that they are so capable and integral and so focused and attentive. And then... After all of that, when it's time for the pay raise, the boss calls in the one that was late, that didn't fulfill the instruction, that left assignments undone, and now the one that is accomplishing, and he takes both of them inside and he say, hey, um, the one that was accomplishing, I want you to get a $10 pay raise. Hey, you right there, uh, you know, you're giving me a flat. I want to give you a $10 pay raise too. What just happened? Injustice. That's the lack of righteousness. That's not the right demonstration of love. Because now, what's the reward for excellence? What's the reward for excellence? Because now, the people that just pit Daniel in the lion's den is getting promoted with Daniel. No, the king Pit them in the lion's den and their family and they got ate by the lions and Daniel got promoted because the king understood the avenue of love for each person. The Bible said when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego got thrown into the, uh, the fire that the people that was throwing them into the fire died of heat. And then after they died of heat, the Bible said that the other ones got thrown into the fire. What is the king doing? He knows what level of love to demonstrate to each person. He didn't tell the people that was throwing uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, hey, y'all about to get promoted to another position. Hey, y'all just threw, uh, y'all just told me to throw uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Hey, you about to get a pay raise. No, that's not the protocol for where they are. Saints, I'm giving you wisdom for life. Not everybody is worthy of the same treatment. Not everybody is worthy of the same treatment. You have to know who is worthy of what you're going to invest, of your honor and your respect. You got to know if you don't understand this law, you're going to violate the Holy Spirit a lot in your life and you're going to grieve him a lot. Saints, 
because I've been in ministry for years. I've seen how stupid people are. I've seen people exalt people that are, are, are clearly not on fire for God. They don't got no love for God. Why are you celebrating them? And then people that's on fire for God, they'll do anything for Jesus. You throw them underneath the bus and say, forget you. You're not right. Saints, you know what they would say to David if he was in that generation? They wouldn't call him a man after God's own heart. But God calls him. You know what our generation calls Jacob? They call him a trickster. Go to every preacher that preached on Jacob and watch what they say. Oh, he was a trickster. That's what everybody preach. Find out even you go to even the man that you think is the wisest and you listen to his definition of Jacob. Oh, he's a trickster. Who? Who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that Jacob is a trickster? Huh? God never said that about Jacob. So where does this report comes about Jacob that he's a trickster? But if you go to any sermon, people will preach on Jacob that he was a trickster. He was a liar. Why didn't God say that? How was he a trickster? Because he tricked Esau out of the blessing. Ah, uh, what? Number one, Esau didn't have a blessing. Number one, God didn't schedule a blessing for Esau. Number one, Esau wasn't in right standing with God. Number one, Esau. Esau was not a friend of God. Number one, Esau was not in a position where God was trying to favor him or promote him. So who was really the trickster? Yeah, you need to meet a wise man before you can become wise. Who was the real trickster? Because why is Esau trying to receive a blessing that he not even worthy? God ain't even scheduled him to receive. So, so who's the trickster? So Jacob is the trickster because he knows that this is his blessing, that he done sold, he done obeyed, he done submitted himself, he, he done yielded himself to the spirit of God, and he knows that this is his harvest time. But everybody calls Jacob a trickster. Wow. <laughs> You go to any preacher. They pre I, I've heard people preach dirty on Jacob and Jesus said, son, you hear the stupidity? Look how they talking about my man. This is God. I said that I love this man. They saying that he a trickster. said that I favor this man, that I want him to be blessed. They saying that he a liar. And they're preaching as if it's an anointing flowing. Oh, you don't understand. There's a generation of curse. You don't understand that even Jacob, look in the word of God, he was a liar, a trickster. Fool. You is the liar and the trickster because you're trying to trick me out of what God said about Jacob. God didn't say nothing that you saying. God said that I love him. God said that this blessing is supposed to come to him. And then God gave his mother the wisdom of how to reverse what the enemy was trying to do through Esau, which was still the blessing and the decree of his father. So God was working prophetically through his mother to tell him what to do so that the blessing would not end up in the hands of of a vessel of dishonor. Look, saints, one time I was at a store, right? I needed help with my tires, so some Syrians. I was walking with them, and they, they some Syrians. They started throwing shade on Israel. Out of the blue, obviously the spirit knew who I was. Out of the blue, how we get over into Israeli conversation? They started saying, you, you see Israeli over there? They stole our land. And I'm up there listening to them. Like, you, your boy, you, your big ass self. You look like you got fried chicken. 
for nostrils. Boy, this is such a big ass up. But then I need the tie, so I just I just went along with the flow. Then uh, uh yeah, they try to steal our land. I said they try to steal your land. He said, Yeah, they try to steal your land. I said, hmm. Yeah, you can't steal nobody's land, right? But you said they're trying to steal your land. They tried to steal our land. I said, okay. I said, but you can't steal nobody. That'd be kind of crucial, right? Brother, are you sure that they're trying to steal your land? He said, they're trying to steal our land. I know it. I got family there. They're trying to steal our land. I said, oh, okay. Gunner spirit. Oh, okay. Long story short, my tie didn't get fixed by some Syrians. <laughs> they didn't know that I was a Jew on the law. Oh, okay. So finally, I got to the station. They started asking me a question. They said, why were you so defensive about the Jews? Are you a Jew? I said, oh, 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 oh. How much is that, huh? How much is that? The, the, the tires? Oh, you give me two tires or three tires. Okay, yeah, now, hold on, let me, I gotta answer this call. Uh-huh. Where, where she died, man? She, she was just a woman, I just left her. Oh, Jesus! Wait, wait, I told you to pick the oxygen. Take, take it. I told you, don't pick the, don't pick the pillow on the oxygen. Take the oxygen. The oxygen supposed to flow through the pillow. The You gonna let her die like that? Why did that? I, I told you not to put the pillow on the, the listen, that, is a, that is a big old pillar. That is a big old pillar. You put the big old pillar on her oxygen. You, you, oh, you kill her. Use a Conrad Murray. You kill the guy. Got in my car. Voided the question. He ain't asked me that since. And I was at the shop for the rest of the time. He asked me nothing about no Jewish people. He came to me one time. I'm sorry for your condolence. I give you my condolences. I said, thank you. Thank you, Syrian spirit. Thank you. I give you my condolences. I said, thank you. Thank you, Syrian spirit. But in his mind, he thought that the Jewish people had stole his land. And he was mad. He said, the Jewish people stole our land. He said, we're going to get it back. I said, he said, what you think about that? I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Praise God. Here's the beautiful thing. Stick with what the Holy Spirit tells you. We live in a flawed world. And it's okay. People don't always know. But you have the privilege to go to the Holy Spirit to find out what is the wisdom of how I treat people. You can't go up to somebody that's a criminal. That killed five people. The last person they killed was their own child. And go up to somebody that have built an orphanage and have fed so many people and given shelter and have sacrificed finances just to make sure people have comfort. And tell both of them, I want you to be honored. No, you have to have wisdom. How you respond to the person that murdered is through love and forgiveness. But you don't respond to the one that murdered and say, hey, I'm about to pitch you over over the land. You're about to be a governor over the land because then the person going to kill folk. But if you pick the one that has the right heart in the position, everybody are going to benefit. Everybody is going to be protected and nobody is going to be murdered because that person has the worthiness of. For that type of honor. Saints you have to know this. Because saints. 
I was at a, I was at a, um, I was at a gas station, right? And I saw a man begging. And when I saw him begging, I was going to give him some money. I really, I, I, I purposed in my heart to give him money because I just see things from a love point of view, um, in, in spontaneous moments at times. So I said, wow. I said, I'm going I'm to I'm shock him and give him some money. So I'm seeing this man, right? And I heard the Holy Ghost say, don't move. I said, yes, Lord. I said, all right. But I had the money right there ready on me. I said, I'm going to give it to him. All of a sudden, the man, he left where he was. And he ran. Nah, saints, that was a full-blown crackhead move, but on the low. I thought he was Speedy Gonzalez's crackhead move on the low. On the low. He just ran. He ran. And he ran past my door, ran past my car, ran. And it was raining outside. He didn't run nowhere. He just ran down the street. The Lord said, okay, son, let's go now. I said, oh, Jesus, what that nigga just ran, though, dude? <laughs> that nigga just ran, Jesus. Um, I know both me and you saw that was a nigga that just ran past us, Jesus. And the nigga didn't follow nothing. That was a nigga that just ran, but he just ran past both of us. And me and you both saw it, Father. We saw it, Father. Father, I know you see all things. You saw that nigga run before he ran. But, Father, what? Jesus said, son, I chased him from right there. He said, I read your heart. He said, there's nothing wrong with that. You got me inside of you. Well, me and you both think about love all the time. That's how we roll. But he said, he's not sore to be honored. <laughs> he said, he's not sore for you to honor him. He's not sore for you to sow into him. I said, ah. what if love is not accompanied with wisdom? God. What if the idea of love is not accompanied with understanding? You'll grieve God. Wow. Saints, it shocked me. It shocked me. You know why it shocked me? It shocked me because when I heard the Holy Spirit say that, I heard a stern, general, ancient of days type of response of this is why you see people suffering in the earth, because not everybody worthy of my honor, son. My mind begin to travel into the depths of time. And I begin to understand, no wonder people are suffering. No wonder I see children suffering. The bloodline, the whole genealogy is not worthy of God's investment. And you say, we are not worthy. Well, it's mercy. Why would the Bible say that he's going to judge us according to the deeds done in our body? Why? Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own deeds. Well, if it's all mercy, why is he judging us according to what we do? Because you don't understand what mercy means. Mercy means that God is going to give you an opportunity to fix 
the wrong fruit. So that even your conduct would be in the position of worthiness to receive honor. Praise God. I will worship you. Give you all the glory. Nothing else will do. I'll give you all the praise. It's an old school song. I will worship you. I'll give you all the glory. Nothing else will do. I'll give you all the praise. Not everybody is Saul. That's why when God sent a man of God to you, what he giving you Saul for you to invest yourself into, you invest your life, invest your, your decisions, invest your joy. Because even your joy brings joy to your man of God. If, if you was a sad person, you bring in sadness to your man of God. But if you got the proper attitude, you bring that atmosphere to your man of God and they get to enjoy the best of you. Since you think about it, if the whole part of your response is depressed and sad and bad report, that's the atmosphere you you bringing to God. So why you think God won't hang around you? <laughs> think about that. Why God trying to hang around you? I don't know what I'm going to do. the atmosphere you bring into God. Do you know some people pray like that for real? Oh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Get off of me. Oh, shut up. Some people are professional prayers. They'll beat their child and step right back into the spirit. <laughs> oh, done stumped the child. The child got stitches in his face. Oh, That's the atmosphere you bring into God.
That's the atmosphere you bring into God. Never justify why you're not giving God the maximum of who you could give him. Never justify. Oh, I'm having a bad day. What if Jesus did that to you when you was about to get hit by a car? Scream! Stop. Send the angel. Boom. He stopped the car accident. What if he would have said, Scream! <laughs> Come on, let the, let, the, let the nigga go. He ain't doing that for me no way. I ain't waiting five years to see them change. Go on, take them out. I'm having a bad day today. Nah, nah, angels, nah, not today. You don't have to protect. I'm having a bad day. No, let them die. I'm having a bad day, all right? I'm having a bad day, okay? It happens. I'm having a bad day. Let them die. No, 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 don't, nobody go protect them or don't do anything. Imagine if God was like you, justifying why you don't give him the maximum of what you can give him. Oh, I've been hurt. Jesus is the most been hurt man in the, in the existence time. Oh, I don't know how to trust. Oh, talk about a Jesus that has a man carrying a money bag for years. And then a man goes and tells this very people that hate Jesus. I know where I'm going to meet him at. I'm going to show you his whereabouts and I'm going to kiss him on the cheek. And when you can see me kiss him on the cheek, you're going to know. Now talk about that. Uh, a, man, a, a God that pits a man inside the garden, gives him riches and dominion and power to speak to things and create things just like him. And then the man goes and do the very same thing that he just told the man not to do. Imagine you talking about you need to learn how to trust people because you've been hurt so much and God who who been hurt from the beginning have an angel called Lucifer pit him over one third, one third and have him and then now those have become the demons. The whole army against God. So what, what am I telling you? There's nothing that you can say to justify why you don't give God your maximum. Not even what people have done to you. There's nothing that you can say to define why you're not giving God the maximum of who you are. Saints, I've been doing this for years consistently with passion, with excellency, with joy. Saints, I was thinking about it today. I started ministering uh, publicly uh, through Twitter at, on 2012 and 2013. I first stepped on to Periscope on in uh, 2015, but I stepped on after I had slandered. I said, I'll never be found on no Periscope. Because word had got to me, you know, there's a new app out, Periscope. I think you should get on there because you're always giving us wide statements and we would like to see you on there. I'm like, nah, I never do no Periscope. That's, that is booty juice. <laughs> and then the Holy Spirit came to me one day and he said, son, I want you to go on Periscope for me. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. You know, when Jesus hear you say that you're not going to do something, that's what he's going to tell you to do. See, even Juan, Juan, you remember, there'll be times where I disappear, right, Juan? Juan knew me over the years. Well, I wouldn't say nothing to nobody. Like, no, nobody knew my whereabouts. Nobody knew where I was. Nobody knew where I, because... Those was the moments where, just like Jesus, you siphon in the glory to come back out of the chamber another person in the power of God. So from that time, and the Holy Spirit told me that, then I started doing I started doing my videos on uh, on Periscope, and I would come on there like. 
Well, I'll be on there like three times a day in between my schedule. And I come on there and, and then I had a broadcast that I started doing prophetic secrets and a lot of people started jocking me. You see people saying prophetic secrets, that stuff came from me. You see people have on a broadcast prophetic mysteries that I started all that. Nobody was doing that. Nobody was doing that. But, but here's the thing. I, I'm not saying that as a form of like, you know, they not nothing. No, I'm just saying that idea stem from me. I've been creating stuff. And the stuff is still going on. That, that ideology came from me. Doing long broadcasts, that stuff came from me. Nobody was doing that. There are some men of God that I can mention their name right now, but I ain't going to do it because there's no, there's no reason for me to, uh, uh, slow down the honor that the people that are connected to them will give to them. So no need for me to mention their name so that they'll see their, their leader different. But it was me that told them to get on Facebook. It was me that taught them how to function on social media. It was me. I wrote them. I told them, this is what you do. This is, you should, it was me. And I did that for so many ministries. So many, countless amounts of ministries I did that for. And I never vocalized it. That's why people always feel comfortable around me because I don't vocalize what's supposed to be private will stay private. I don't, I don't vocalize it. So I never told nobody, hey, you know, I'm helping your favorite minister right here. It's me giving them the heads up with all that. No, 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 it's me. It wasn't people doing Facebook Lives until I got on there. Because I introduced them to that. Anybody that comes into your life that increases your wisdom is not your enemy. Adapt to the Holy Spirit so that you can adapt to them. Once you get into the place of sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you greater understanding. See, you see my son right there. You see what he said? Joshua, I, I've told you things that I've told to no other soul. And watch, Joshua, there's nobody on this line, not even one or anybody that can say that I've told them anything concerning what you have told me. And on this line, nobody can speak up and say, hey, but you told me what he told you. There's not one person. So I started in 2016 and I was doing videos and some of y'all got connected officially there, but y'all, some of y'all knew me from the wisdom statements and stuff like that. The wild thing about it is that when I started doing videos, at first I didn't want to do it. So God started showing up in this glory cloud. Like I'd be live. I was on Prophetic Secrets Live one late night. And I would prophesy to some people and then while I was on the line, I felt my atmosphere change. Like I felt like I stepped into another atmosphere and I was still talking, but I, I was at the time I was talking about how the Holy Spirit had shown me a woman with a back problem and I saw the demon on her back and I was dealing with that, dot, dot, dot. And at the time when I was talking, I felt like energy surge in my room, the power of God surge in my room. I was sitting down, I was wearing a bandana around my neck. It's a symbolism of that. And while I was live, the glory of God came in visible form. From that time, whenever I would go through like warfare situations, I'll, I'll have that place where I didn't want to go on Periscope at the time. And then God would tell me, go on Periscope. And when I go on Periscope, the glory cloud would hit. Then I started this thing, the Welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference.
Because now it's not just through video. You can be actually in my presence when I'm moving in that realm and feel that realm, that tangibility of Jesus, the substance of his being. You can feel that excitement. I know when I was in Atlanta, it was like my head was spinning. Like I couldn't see nobody. As a matter of fact, I still wonder to this day, how did I even know who I was praying for? Because I couldn't see nobody. The only time I was able to start seeing people was, was when I started the uh, Start doing that money coming thing at the end and the praise break and stuff like that. Then I started seeing everybody. But all I could see was the angel pointing me here and the angel pointing me there. And it was just a complete teamwork together. And the angels pointing out people. The angels saying this one, pray for this one. I don't know if you remember when I was in that red suit that night. I was real calm. So it just shows you that isn't and the glory of God, they don't work just because you hyping up stuff and you singing and worshiping. No, I was just very calm. I was very relaxed. It was nothing like I was just teaching. We was just having a awesome time of impartation. But then all of a sudden, I called out uh one of my daughters in the back on my first time ever seeing them ever at a at a service. And to this day, I still don't know prior to that how um, the acquaintance happened, but that was the first meeting ever being in attendance. And the Holy Spirit, while I was up there, I see the angel of the Lord stood by her. The angel of the Lord did like this. <laughs> and so if you ever saw that clip, maybe I'll find that clip for you. When that happened, I started looking in that direction, I stopped everything I was doing. I completely diverted. While we moving towards ministering to her, the fire of God already present. The power of the Holy Spirit is already strong. Because let me just say this. I, I, it, it, I think that a lot of people talk about the glory of God and the fire of God out of uh, zeal. But most people haven't really experienced it, even in the ministerial realm. And that's that's something that everybody should aim at. But a lot of people do teachings on it out of a place of zeal or information that they have heard. But I know that the fire of God, it turns you into... A very radical, non-reasonable person. I don't know if y'all remember when when um, uh, Rosetta Barnes, when she came in with the walker. And she stood her right there. That was the first night. Well, snatch your walker. <laughs> Because in that moment, you're not thinking about the reasonable side of, oh, this person might fall. Oh, this person, they need this. No, no. And I don't know if you remember, I told Rosetta, I said, Rosetta, I said, you can keep this if you want, but you don't need it. You remember she came walking in that last night? No, no walker, no nothing. Because see, Jesus is a gentleman. He not going to force you to walk in what you're supposed to walk in, but he's going to create the atmosphere and the opportunity for you to take a hold of it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. Does not wisdom cry and understanding pit forth her, her, her voice? Now, I've spoken to you about the wisdom angel, but there's a 
angel called understanding, and she's a female as well. We dealt with wisdom, but understanding is a female angel as well. And here's what the angel understanding knows. She knows what makes Jesus experience the highest level of happiness. What drives him crazy? She knows what words Jesus is looking for from you. She is a mastermind of conduct that unlocks Christ in an environment, in a season, in a, in a financial realm of your life. She knows she not guessing she been with him since the beginning of time. Wisdom is a woman that been with Jesus since the beginning of time. Understanding is a woman that been with Jesus from the beginning of time. The reason why Jesus loved Mary and he loved um, um, Luke chapter 8 verse 3 talked about there was uh, many women that uh, moved with Jesus that understood him, that had, uh, gave her that substance to him and stuff like that. Why are Jesus taking a liking to these people? Because this angel of wisdom and understanding are accompanying these women. So the favor of God is able to move in their money in their minds because when favor hits your mind it creates peace when favor hits your decision it it it, it moves you into wisdom when favor hits your health it moves you, uh, you it moves you into wholeness uh the absence of sickness and pain and disease so hereby proverbs chapter 8 is telling us about this angel called wisdom this angel called understanding. Now, she knows what conduct God is looking for from you because she understands the order that God has created and what brings him pleasure when he sees it in people's behavior. So Abigail is talking to David. The Bible says she has the spirit of wisdom and understanding. What Saints, you, you don't be catching what the Bible meant. If I have the spirit of wisdom and understanding, I have these female angels with me. Saints, a lot of times you... You read the Bible so fast that you're not catching what it's telling you. When the Bible said in uh, Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 that he shall have the spirit of wisdom and understanding. It means that these female angels are accompanying him. I'm talking about Jesus. When the Bible says that Moses laid his hands on Joshua and the spirit of wisdom came upon Joshua. This is telling you. That this female angel is moving with Moses. And now he gives the female angel the authority, the permission to start moving with Joshua. Here's what the power of a mentor, a divine king, a man of God is to you. That when we decide to transfer an anointing, our spirit to you, we transfer in the angel that accompanies that. So now there's an angel that's going to start moving with you off of the impartation that the man of God has given to you. Watch this. You notice when Elisha was praying for the man to see? Did you notice that once Elisha gave him an impartation, now he's in the presence of all these angels? Did you know that that was a transference not only of sight, but a, a transference of angels? Where well, Elisha is telling him, all these angels belong to you now. So impartation carries angels that move alongside of it. She standeth in the top of the high places. 
by the way in the places of the paths. She cried at the gates, the entry of the city, and coming into the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Why is wisdom and understanding so diligent? Why are these two female angels so passionate? Because they know the wealth, the health, the deliverance and salvation that the Lord Jesus wants to get to you. So they move with such urgency. They cry out because they know what the Lord wants to get to you. You think about that, saints. That's the mercy of God. They know what God is trying to get to you. So they always crying out. They hoping that you will be sensitive, that you won't miss, that you won't be offended, that you won't be distracted, that you won't be uh, Mr. Know-it-all, Miss Know-it-all. They hoping that you'll catch that this is a divine moment for you to take on a realm in the spirit of authority and dominion and being rich and being wealthy and being prosperous and being blessed and being free and being on top and being the head and not the tail. So wisdom and understanding are always looking to see who in the earth is going to humble themselves to heed wisdom. Heed the prophet because Wisdom is in the prophet's mouth. Who's going to take an opportunity to attend to the words of their man of God so that this can be activated in your life? Wow. Let me show you something. It says, O ye simple, understand wisdom, and you fools, be ye of an understanding heart. I want you to see this. The simple and the fool. It dealt with two realms. Look at how these women are rebuking the simple and the fool. The simple don't know. The fool don't want to know. And these angels are saying, don't stay in this state. Break this curse of not wanting to hear what we have to tell you. Our corrections, our rebukes, our directions, our wisdom, our, our counsels, our advice, our impressions, our convictions. Leave that place so that we can teach you. Watch this. Oh, ye simple. Understand wisdom and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Look at verse six. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. Watch. Wisdom is understanding is saying that our vocabulary is going to create excellency in your life. Which is the vocal of what I've been teaching you, saints? Excellence. Giving the best of you in a moment to Jesus. Not holding back. Look what it says. And the opening of my lips shall be right. right things. Remember I told you about right words. Because this angel is going to show you how to get money cometh to move in your life. How to move wealth with your tongue and your sowing. This angel is going to show you how to. Cancel sickness and destroy events that was uh, scheduled against your life for tragedy, car accidents, doctor's visits, surgeries is going to create a cancellation of those things. Look at verse seven. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Which shows you this is how you know if a man is a man or a woman of God. Because if they are false man or woman of God, they can't operate in this realm of 
speak in wisdom and understand it. They won't understand this realm because the Bible clearly said that the angels of wisdom and understanding will not move with wickedness. Wow. Wow. Saints, this heavy. What this text just revealed, that if you ever see a man or a woman moving with the wisdom of God, it is a sign to you to let you know that they might. <laughs> because the, the angels, they telling you their protocol. They telling you we don't move with people that's wicked. So, if you ever see a wicked person, you're not going to see us talking to them. Because we don't move with people that's wicked. They let you know the law of God for their life as angels. Wisdom is understanding and saying in the text, we do not move with, with people that are wicked. So, if you ever find a man or a woman that's releasing the wisdom of God, be very careful. I beg of you. Because the angels are pleading out in this text and letting you know, we don't move with wicked people. We don't give them understanding. We don't give them wisdom. That's not our function. We're not using the mouth. Let's go to verse. Um, let's go to verse 10. It says, receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. This deals with the fact that you must become teachable before you try to become wealthy or rich. You must have a riches in the realm of your knowledge. You must have a riches and a wealth in your instructions from God. So saints, here's the revelation that instruction is actually these angels flirting with you. No, I'm not talking about Ellen DeGeneres. I, you, you got me, you got me bent. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. Get you. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, Susie. I'm not talking about that. All right. Hold your horses and hold your mules and all of them keep your cools. All right. I'm not talking about none of those things. Understand what I'm talking about. If you're going to understand what I'm talking about. You have to pay attention to what I'm talking about. Because what I'm talking about, I'm about to talking. And what I'm talking about, what I'm about to talk about is talking about. So you got to make sure you're not talking while I'm talking about it. You got to understand what I'm saying. The Bible says, receive my instruction. Instruction is where these angels are flirting with you. So wisdom and understanding saying, hey, I want to come live with you. I want to I wanna upgrade you. I want to do something for you. I'm tired of you wearing these $2 wigs. I'm tired of you ain't having no edges. I'm tired of you having this two pain. I'm, I'm tired of you listening to T-Pain. I'm, I'm tired. Got holes in your drawers. Nah, I, I, I didn't say holes in your drawers. I said holes with an L-E-S. All right. L-E-S. Holes with an L-E-S. I'm talking about holes. All right. Some of you all got pajamas that you don't want to retire. <laughs> Get rid of that on pajamas. I'm there holding up the pajamas like this. Let me make sure I'm showing sure my Hold up the pajamas like this here. Somebody knock at the door. Talk, so hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Don't rush me. My pants almost fell down. We got company in here. Don't rush me. Hold on. You 
You got pajamas. You don't want to retire. You know when your clothes smell smell like yesteryears that it's time for you to get rid of them. When your clothes smell like the last five houses, the apartments that you lived in, you know it's time to get rid of that sucker. Since how many of y'all have family members that their food tasted like how their house smelled? Nah, Saints. You got to be careful. Some people they don't like, they don't. Sure, you be up there eating the rice, you know. Mm. Does it taste good? <laughs> yeah. What? This is some bull. What is this? Cause this food smell like you. Did, did you cook yourself in the pot? I know what you did. That's why you be doing rituals. You got inside of the pot. Cause their food smell like their place. See, for those of you that understand what I'm talking about, this is so funny to you. You understand what I'm talking about. Because if you live long enough on this earth, you're going to go to somebody's house and their house going to have a smell and the food that they try to offer to you is going to taste like how their house smells. If, if you have had this happen to you, say, shout. <laughs> if you had this happen to you, say shout. Mm, mm, mm. Change your whole perspective. You, you don't want to eat nothing for the rest of you up there trying not to hurt their feelings. Nah, because saints, when I was younger, this would happen to me. That's how I know. When I was younger, it happened to me. How I many of y'all had their mothers? My, I had the type of mother. My mother tell me, don't eat you, don't you eat from nobody. Now, of course, I'm at the age. I can decide who to eat from. I know. I know, I know if somebody got it on. Yeah, yeah. I know who to eat from. But your mother would tell you, be careful. I mean, y'all have mother like that tell you, be careful. Don't, don't eat, don't eat everybody's food. If they offer you some, I know you're going to go play with Eldred. But if his family asks you, if you hungry, tell them that you already ate something. Tell them that you already ate something, but I beat you up. Boy, you, you be up there. Hey, 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 you're in my face. Hey, hey, you will spit on me. I know you've been single for some years that your mouth done got clean. But listen, you still spit on me. I the spit is spit. I'm not blind to none of that. Stop being disrespectful. I, I'm not being disrespectful. Uh, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just telling you you got to spit on me. Don't talk back to me. I ain't doing nothing. I can't see no more. I'm going to Stevie won the concert next week. Because me and him got something in common together. We both blind, blind. Next week, you up there blind in the concert. You done went crazy. You ain't know that nigga had boundaries. You done walked up on the stage next to Stevie up there singing with him. They done picked you up in the air. You feel wind rushing all around you. They done got you up in the air. The, the, the police done escorting you out. You go to jail. They ask you what's your name. 
He said, can, can we have your license? And he said, I can't see. Officer, I will give you my license, but I can't see. And I don't know where you brought me, all right? Who is this? Where am I at? I don't know where you brought me. I just know I was at a Stevie Wonder concert singing do 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 Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20 says, I will lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of the path of judgment. Which shows you that when these angels come into your life, they're going to lead you into judgment. So God going to judge your life with these angels. Because these angels, they come to lead you down the path of judgment. So that means that your life going to be given an opportunity for you to reach the height of who you should be or or you're resisted. You're hold back. Now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. I, I'm going to go stronger on that another time. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Do you understand what this means? When you love the angel of wisdom and understanding. When you love them, when you embrace them. What does it mean to love them? That means that you obey what they tell you to do through your man of God. If you love them, the Bible says, I will cause you to inherit substance, meaning that your obedience, to wisdom and understanding, meaning having a good conduct in the presence of your man of God, having obedience to your prophet of God, having the right, excellent spirit in the presence of your divine king. What is it saying? It said, I will cause those to inherit substance and I'll fill their treasures. What is it saying? I'm going to make you rich. So your wealth is connected to adaptation. You take a note, write that down. Your wealth is connected to your adaptation. If you have understanding, you adapt to your man of God's preference, his desires, his instructions. You have wisdom, you obey his instructions. Which is adaptation. So now you understand how I get that statement that your wealth is connected to your adaptation because wisdom and understanding are both realms where you have to adapt to your man of God. Saints, if you understand how powerful your man of God is, your prophet of God is, that's where your whole riches, your money is located. Your money not in the jackpot, your money is in your prophet's pot. Remember the prophet had death in the pot and he did something, pit salt and stuff and he got the pot right? Your jackpot is in the prophet's pot. Your wealthy place is in your man of God. And when you walk in honor towards your man of God, these angels are already on assignment to make sure that you increase with money. The Holy Spirit wants you to be wealthy. The Holy Spirit wants you to have abundance. The Holy Spirit wants you to have more than enough. The Holy Spirit wants you to be rich. But he'll pit the man of God in your life and how you treat the man of God is going to decide if the rich is going to come to you. Saints, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that everybody was rich because they knew how to treat Solomon. Everybody became rich in Abraham's life because they knew how to treat Abraham. His wife called him Lord. Lot was in submission to him. When Lot left submission to him, then Lot got hemmed up by the kings. And then Lot 
was in a lot of bondage and he lost everything, which shows you that Abraham was the producer of what Lot had. Because when Lot left Abraham, he lost everything. Which shows you that your wealth is inside of your man of God. Think about that. Saints, the woman at Zarephath, her finances to feed her son was in Elijah. So when Elijah came, that was her opportunity to protect her son. That's why if you got children, you should be a sower. Because it's not just about you. That child is going to need your obedience to jumpstart them into their future. Or else they're going to have it hard. Wow. 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 Saints, Jesus is so beautiful. If you step into the beauty of Jesus, you'll realize that a lot of times it's, it's a lot of vain arguments that you enter into. People will talk to you and say, oh, that's just a man. It's not Jesus. It's just a We often forget that God came, came down in a man. That was a man. Oh, I'm about to say something, but I, I, I'm going to say it because, you know, I'm raw. I'm in my raw anointing. Jesus had a dick. He had body parts. He was a, he was in a man's body. I know some of y'all think that he didn't have no dick, that he was just nothingness. Oh, look, I done stirred up the religious world. Look how they done gone crazy. He said Jesus had a dick. Yeah, he's in a man's body. He has the body of a male. So he has a chest. He has arms. He has knees. He has shins. He has toes. He has fingers. He has hands. He has a neck. So stop being negative. The negativity. So he has body parts. Did Jesus ever feel sexual? Yes, he did. Did Jesus feel like loving on somebody? Yes, he did. Why do you think that he's talking to the woman at the well and telling her, girl, if you drink this water, you'll never thirst again. <laughs> Now, Jesus is talking spiritual, but it's still cute. It's still, it's still beautiful to see the nature of Jesus, how he loves. Because he didn't care that this woman was with some, so <laughs> he didn't care that this woman was, was with somebody. Now, mind you, she had five jingalangs, jingalangs that she was not she was with them. Remember what Jesus said. You've been with five men and the one that you're with right now is not your husband. <sighs> Jesus is telling her you've been throwing around in circle in vain. <laughs> There's not a harvest coming to you at all. You've been throwing around in circle in vain. So Jesus knows her relationship status. That she got five jinglang jinglangs, and Jesus say, "Girl, if you drink of my water, you'll never thirst again. If you get with me and let me become your man, you'll never be thirsting for none of that any longer. You won't thirst for that sin. You won't thirst for that lifestyle. <laughs> you won't thirst for that that river, all of that contaminated water. If you become my woman." I'll waive your desire for all of that. You'll just be with me and you'll live in liberty, in deliverance, in power, in glory, in wisdom, in prosperity, and eternal life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ah! Saints. 
Saints, Jesus took her out of her relationships. Jesus took her out of the desire. I want to be married. Why these men won't marry me? Jesus said, forget them. Come unto me, all ye that are with me. Heavy later, I'll give you rest. This is what Jesus was telling the woman. You done tried everything. You tried jingalang number one, jingalang number two. You begged jingalang number three to marry you. You you begged jingalang <laughs> jingalang number four <laughs> to give you a chance. You begged jingalang jingalang number five. You went on a five day fast, hoping that he'll change his mind. I give you all for you can't refuse. I give you a piece of me. By the bing, by the boom, I take you out your doom. Jesus delivers this woman. She becomes a worshiper of Jesus, a lover of Jesus. She's free. He gives her value to her life. That she's not just a woman that goes and picks up water. But she's a woman of God. She's not just a servant. She's a queen. He unlocks the virtue in this woman and the Bible said that she went around preaching Jesus to everybody. How this woman went go get a drink of water, end up drinking Jesus, and now all she can talk about is Jesus to her generation. How he saves, how he delivers, how he baptizes with the Holy Ghost. How he sets free. How he multiplied multiplicity of multitude. <laughs> Man, I think I done fell in love with Jimmy Swaggart on the low. Because I've i been acting like him lately. I done played his music the other day. Oh, shoot. I just heard a hater say something. Forget you. I heard somebody, see, you can't be prophetic because you hear somebody's thoughts. You can't write on the line, but forget you. <laughs> Double flung, pluck you and you. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. It's beginning to rain. Oh, your sons and your daughters. That's how Jimmy said. Let's see. He's pouring, pouring his spirit out on your sons and your daughters. Ding -ling. <laughs> Pastor Jimmy Swagger making millions a month, so he. He can flex. He's he making a million dollars a month. They'll be on something like broadcasting. We tired of you preachers out here always asking for money and having a fundraiser and up there trying to talk like this gospel was about merchandising and all this different type of stuff. And then I'll tell the oh, we need you to we need you to sow your best seed. There's some of you all going to give a one million dollar seed. You're going to sow a one million dollar seed on this line. <laughs> I need to stop, man. When I'm drunk in the spirit, see, see, somebody gonna get offended, but I'm just joking in the spirit. Lord knows I love I love Jimmy Swagger. I don't I don't got time to watch him, but I I, I love him just as a you know. And praise God for his life, and that's God's that's God's. Decision. That's God's business. I ain't worried about that. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8. <laughs> it's beginning to rain. <laughs> the 
Don't you sing like that? You sing just like that. It's beginning to rain on the sun you know. If you think about it, he was like the Elvis of gospel. Pour your spirit out on the sons and your daughters. It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of my father. See, if, you, if you're a woman, you can't hear no tingly voice because of that tingly voice do sing. Let me stop singing like that. We pour him in if you're thirsty and dry. He has a supply. He's beginning to rain. Oh, man, I need to find that song. I need to boomerang. I need to boomerang this. If you're thirsty and dry, he has a supply, it's beginning to rain. If you're thirsty, see, see, I grew, see, my mother used to listen to the hymns, so I, that stuff is beautiful to me, see, some of y'all, see, I'm cool, man, I, I can, in all generations, hip-hop, I can fit there, man, I, I can do all that, I, I just, drip, I can do the drip, huh, not the hospital drip, I ain't trying to get sick, not, not the hospital drip, I ain't trying to be sick, but I do the drip. All of that. Huh? I met a I met a lady one time and she was in ministry. This is what she said. She said, when I watch you on Periscope, you like John the Baptist. But when we watch you in a service, you like Benny Hinn. That's what she told me. What what you what you what you trying to say? You trying to say that I I, I got uh, what a skin condition, malaria? What you, you trying to call me Michael Jackson? I don't know that. I don't know who I am. What you trying to say? God, what you what, what you trying to say to me? She said, "No, I'm saying that you have a raw side." But then when you're demonstrating, you can see the power. This is what she said. For people that don't know who you are, when they see the, the, the demonstration, it's like the demonstrations letting them know when the rawness come forth, that's me too. Are you getting this? The demonstration come to solidify. Hey, you remember when he was wrong? That's me too. You just don't know me like that. If you're thirsty and dry, give you a supply. It's beginning to rain. If you're thirsty and dry. See, when your mind animated, you can't hear that. Because when I hear that, I have my mind. My mind started laughing. I said, <laughs> the whole choir be singing to us. If I'm thirsty and dry, he'll give me a supply. It's beginning to rain. If I'm thirsty and dry, if you're, if you're thirsty and dry, if you're thirsty and dry, if you're thirsty and dry, if I'm thirsty and dry, he'll give me a supply. I'll be giving to rain. You be in the back of you laughing at everybody talking. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Did you hear? Did you hear Todd? Did you hear Todd? She's singing if she's thirsty and dry. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 8 verse 21 say that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I'll fill their treasuries. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasuries. Watch what it say verse 22. The Lord possessed me. That's why I tell you to pray like that. Because that's how the angels pray. That's how the angels talk. Look how wisdom and understanding talk. They said, the Lord possess me. That's why I tell you to pray like that because I got these angels in my life since long ago. You remember, I always tell you, say, Jesus possess me. Look at what the angels are saying. The Lord possess me. 